Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to yet another Shoutcraft Clan Wars right here on MLG TV. My name is Total Biscuit, joined by my co-caster for the day, my insanity penguin. Hello, Mr. Total Biscuit. How are you doing tonight? Not too bad. I should clarify to the audience, of course, that does not mean that I actually own the insanity penguin. It is my insanity penguin. <laughs> we should just call you MYI. You know, for about six months, I called your team MYE and didn't even realize it. We were having a little bit of a of a betting thing going on in our chat about how long that was going to go on until you started saying MYI. I don't know what happened. I, it just, <laughs> for some reason, my brain just clicked into place and said, oh, it's MYE, obviously. I mean, what else could it be? There wouldn't be anything else that would be the to case. To be and completely fair, we are a Swiss team and I in German is E. Yes, that, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and pretend that I did that on purpose. But regardless... <laughs> Uh, bringing you along, which is awesome, because you will be able to give us some interesting insight into your team. You're actually going to be playing today as well. We're obviously going to kick you off the uh, cast God for that. But yeah, you're going to play a bit of 2v2. We were not expecting to have to play against life. Uh, uh, yes, he, he likes his 2v2. You want to watch out for him. He can do some amazing we things with links. So we have some special tactics planned. I should hope so. To this moment, we're not entirely sure which of our two special tactics we're going to use, but Fair enough. we have two options that we're considering. Yeah. Well, overall, this this is going to be a very interesting clan war. Um, I would agree. I would agree. All of our like, I I, I think all of our players, especially the uh, especially Smile and J Power and Nerox and myself, have been practicing a lot. On the other hand, we're all very very much outsiders in our games, so. It's going to be kind of interesting to see if the special tactics that have been planned are going to work out. J-Power, specifically. I Every time I turn around in the gaming room for the last two days, I've just only seen him on Karu with another Zerg playing customs. So I'm hoping that he can put up a really good fight against life. This is the most intimidating Star Tail lineup I've seen in the Clan Wars yet. Like They, they didn't even put out a lineup this scary against some of the Korean teams. Uh, the only weak link in the chain is Legend, but Legend, instead of going up against Jack G, actually ends up going up against Smile. And uh, a TBT on Neo Jungle Valley, we barely ever see that. I mean, that's, that in itself is going to be crazy. <laughs> but your lineup this week is, I mean, let's be honest, it's lacking a couple of key faces. Yeah, basically, Stardust and Jack G have both been on vacation in Korea. And initially, we were planning on fielding Jokji instead of Smile, as you kind of mentioned, on Neo Jungle Valley. But it turns out that he's actually on his flight back right Arr. now. So that's not an option. Uh, I'm actually not too worried about that. Smile has pretty solid TBT, and he is himself a Grandmaster player. And I, I think he definitely has a shot at taking out Legend, who is, as you mentioned, probably the weak link in the Star Tail lineup tonight. Uh, Stardust is just still on vacation. Some days he's available to play, some days he's not. And uh, today was one of the days he's not necessarily available uh, available to play. So J Power is going up in his stead. He and is. Uh, as I mentioned, he's been pouring a lot of practice into this. Uh, he's not expecting to win. Obviously, Life is one of the most successful players in the history of StarCraft II. But uh, we're hoping that he can put up a really good fight. That would definitely be an upset if J Power is able to take out Life on Keru, which is one of the less crazy maps. I mean, it's hard yeah. to pull off a really ridiculous strat on a map like Keru. It's a little unusual, but it's not crazy. The first matchup that we're having a look at right here will, of course, be Curious vs. Cell. Zerg vs. Zerg on New Pompeii, which is actually going to be one of the first maps that we retire from the Clan War, simply because ZVZ is almost all we've ever seen on it. Yeah, when we first saw the maps, uh, I was talking to Kane. I think he was still in the house when the maps were announced. And we, we immediately discussed how we were only going to send out Zergs on this map. Yeah, and you and everybody I, I else. Think, yeah, I think there's been like two non-Zergs who were fielded on this on this map and uh, proceeded to both get wrecked. Yeah, there's been a TVP on yeah. this map, which was... Oh, really? Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was Marine Lord versus Huck. And outside of that, though, it is, it's definitely a very Zerg-favored map. So we're phasing it out at the end of May, and we'll be bringing in a new map to replace that. We're currently having a discussion with all the map makers right now as to which kind of map we want to put in. But here we go. We're going to have another ZVZ here, which is... It starts so many series here in the Clan Wars on this map. And we are about to begin, so let's get right into it. And we'll see who has the power here. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this clan war between Startail and My Insanity. And in the blue trunks, playing Zerg to the west here of New Pompeii, it's the one and only Startail Curious. Versus and spawning... Sorry by all that. means. <laughs> by all means. Spawning at the 2 o'clock spawn location, we have our red Zerg player representing My Insanity. It's going to be the Finnish player, Cyril. 
Now, I, whenever I cast with, like, one of the, the really big kind of analyst casters, like, say, like, Day 9 or whatever, I always give them a hard time if they do the second intro. Because I say, look, this is the only thing I'm good at. Give me this one thing, <laughs> all right? You can have the rest of the glory. But, n okay, now we know. We'll, we'll, share, we'll share the burden. Okay, sounds good. Now, it's always uh, weird to be able to do that with no body language whatsoever. It is. Because we're sitting in other countries. It's... <laughs> It's it was very uh, it was very awkward because uh, I, I commentate WCS Europe with a guy called Maddles, mm -hmm. and we about the week before WCS Europe Challenger we cast together at I fifty one, so we got used to sort of the body language thing, and then uh -huh. the first day back for WCS was just absolute nightmare of a cast. Oh uh, uh, yes, it's, it's either like that or cast. Oh, so sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Here we go. See, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? This is how it happens. Uh, uh, it's always weird that I I have to wonder if that was actually because of Skype or whether it's because casting. The I series actually makes you a worse caster for at least a few weeks afterwards, just because of the amount of drinking that goes on at that event. <laughs> uh, very true, very true indeed. But um, we already have the builds sort of shaping up for our two guys. We got a fourteen fourteen against a fourteen fourteen, yep. shockingly, and uh, they do already know where each other have spawned. So for those yes. of you guys who are watching who don't quite know how New Pompeii plays out, it's a five spawn map, but you can only spawn in cross, which means that there's two locations that your opponent can spawn in. And the Overlords did sort of intersect. So, Zeril and Curious both know where one another are. And at this point, it's going to turn into a bit of a micro game. Yep, it will. And Curious is absolutely a fantastic Zerg player. Always overshadowed by life, I feel. A solid performer that's been around basically forever. And has al always been on a code S kind of level. But we should bear in mind that it's quite early over there in Korea. In fact, they are up at 6am to play. So, you can never count out the possibility that a Korean's a little bit groggy. Yeah. And I also think that it's important to note that Serral actually has a 100% win rate in the Shoutcraft Clan Wars. He's he does. been a little bit... It's kind of like balancing out ATC, where he has, I think, a 1-6 record. Here, he's like 5-0 <laughs> or something. It's it's kind of weird how that balances itself out. But he's also taken out uh, taken out some Korean representatives. I believe it was Ryung that he took out versus Axiom. So I believe he did. He's really solid on this map as well. He's played some Zerg players here. Uh, he won against Liquid here. I can't remember exactly who it was. I think it was TLO. And uh, he's had some really good performances on this map. And he's going to be going for... Both players seem to be going for the two sneaky lings around the south way. Yeah. While most are sort of going up to the north. And this is kind of what's been winning games for Zergs who win on this map. It's like whoever actually gets the lings to the south or to the, to the sort of awkward side and gets them in unnoticed, tends to take a big advantage. Indeed. Although it is worth noting that Zerg players have learned that now, and like the, the Overlord placement is some of the most elaborate that you'll ever see on a map because of that. Very true. And it looks like the two lings, or the two sets of lings here at the bottom, they did intersect. They had a little bit of a skirmish. Nothing died down there, and looks like Curious was sort of warded off by that spine on the high ground. Meanwhile, he doesn't have a spine of his own. A couple of Banelings being morphed in for both sides here. Serral... Almost gets one. Gotta try to get you. That, that thing has just two health on it. Come on. Come on, Cyril. You just hit that Banelink one more time. It's all right. Just but, hit uh, it with your other Banelinks. That'll work really, really well. <laughs> but here we go. The oh. engage. Oh, that was very close there. By There's the double cancellation of both there between those. And a couple more Banelinks will be morphed in. However, Cyril managed to stick the round. Curious takes a big hit. That is five workers killed there. And that's a huge difference already between these two. We're just waiting to see what... But Curious morphed in four Banelings on the other side. And awesome. there's no Overlord coverage on this side for Serral. Serral almost got a couple of really good Baneling connects, but that one left only has a couple of hit points left. Big detonation at the top of the ramp here for Curious as well. Serral's Baneling's not quite getting done what he wants. Curious has replenished some of that drone count down. Only one worker at this point. He's going to be equally... Oh! The detonation goes off. Curious gets some damage done. Gets oh. five and then gets a few Ling reinforcements on the way up. So that's a bit of an evening up. But serral has gone for the run by yet again. Curious! Too slow! And takes yet more damage. He is now down to just nine worker... No, it's actually he still has the worker lead. Oh, we had it. Now he doesn't. The last Baneling goes in and... This is mutually assured destruction on both sides. Yeah, this is becoming a little bit ridiculous here. We've got a one drone lead for Serral. Ah, he gets another nice bailing hit there as well. Two more morphing in here. Looks like there's no offensive lings at the moment for Curious that could potentially go into banelings. And Curious sitting right now with a one worker lead and a one supply lead as well. So the ling counts are relatively even here. 
Nice queen positioning, though, I must say. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a very, very, very narrow ramp when these rocks are up, so it is entirely possible that you can make that work. We've got a couple of links from several coming around the side, but Curious is already sending links of his own, a larger force, in fact. If they intersect, then that's only going to go one way, but it looks like they're going to miss it. Curious has a bunch on the right side, and several manages to deftly dodge. But he may run under the Overlord. He shouldn't, though. He's got a, an, an Overlord keeping an eye on Curious's Overlords over here. So he should be able to sneak in. And so far, Serral is getting the better Baneling connections. And yet Curious is still very much in this game. The bigger point to notice as well is that there's also Spine Crawler here for Serral, which we mentioned earlier. But there's no Spine up for Curious. So Curious is going to go for a bit of a Ling run by, but he won't be able to get too much done. He picks no. off one drone. He actually maintains a three drone lead right now. There's a couple more Banelings morphing in here for Serral at the bottom side. These are going to be very important because he does have a bit of a Ling depth or a drone deficit at the moment. That he does. A nice little detonation there. Serral is able to force one of Curious's Banelings to go bye-bye. These two are on the way, so this is going to get intense. It's going to come down, I think, to... Oh, dear Whoa. lord. That was a terrible detonation for Curious. I don't know what happened there. And that might have cost him the game. That was absolutely disastrous. I'm not even There's sure nothing... what... Yeah, uh, there's, there's nothing actually on the field for him right now, and Serral uh -oh. is struggling a little bit with a bit of lag. That's a little bit That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Here. That's extremely unfortunate. Well, but he's he... wandering some banelings in. He's going for it. This is funny <laughs> this enough getting Curious a huge amount of time. To... Favor. <laughs> it could, although it could go the other way around. This is giving Curious a huge amount of time to react. But admittedly, during lag, yep, yeah, see, Curious got the pull, and that's two banelings for three drones. But Serral's lag is really hurting him hard now. This is not good for him. No, not at all. And. Uh, looks like Serral has a couple of workers in production. I think, based on the workers' kill tab, that evened it out at 12 apiece. Three more on the way here for Serral. Means All right, we're going to get a pause to see if we can sort this out. Yeah, very, very glad to see that finally come down. Uh, that was definitely affecting the game. Hopefully, we can get that resolved. And uh, taking a look at the way the game's actually standing right now, we have a four-supply lead here for Serral at the moment. Most importantly, I think Curious doesn't actually have a queen out, which there's none in production either. That's going to end up hurting him in the long run. Yeah, Curious lost his queen in the fight. He's actually lost two queens throughout this, whereas Serral has not lost any. I think that's, that may be absolutely crucial. Ling Bane Ling Wars without queens. Yeah, the queen's a nice defensive unit, but most importantly, you're getting those big lava injects. Oh, Serral has almost lost his spine crawler. It's down to 62 health. It's currently 12 drones apiece. But as you said, it's queen versus no queen on oh. one base. Not a good hit. Serral's going for it hit. here. Curious is in real trouble. That one baneling could be big here if it gets a detonation on all the oh. lanes. Gets about it got most of them. them. Yeah, it got the baneling and most of them. That might be enough. But there are two more morphing in here. So this is starting to get really desperate for Curious, who's down to a few Zerglings only. He's brought a few more in, but those two banelings are probably going to be the decider. One detonates, and Serral gets it in the mineral line. Now, I have a feeling Curious is about to lose at this point. Or at least he's going to lose a heck of a lot of workers for this. Yeah, we've seen it. GG. Well, yeah, well comes out. Well won. GG, Serral. Takes game number one here, maintaining his 100% win rate in the Shoutcraft Clan Wars. He's a good ZBZ player, there's no doubt really about that. Well lately in this, this, is, this just seems to be his tournament. It's like his team league. Well, you know, I've said it many times before, I believe the Pro League format is absolutely fantastic. It's something that you can really prepare for and actually spend a huge amount of time building a strategy for and practicing specifically for it. Whereas an all-kill format, it just kind of, it's more of a like, were you okay on the day sort of scenario? You can't really prepare too much for it unless you're being groomed as a sniper specifically. But in the current modern team leagues, sniping's kind of pointless, especially with the ace revive rule. So I think that you got these kind of players that can really shine in a preparation focused environment. I mean, like Flash, for instance, you know, pro league monster fails everywhere else. Uh, he thrives on that preparation based environment. Yeah. And uh, Serral's definitely shown a lot of uh, a lot of skill in this sort of prepared environment that we've been having in the Shoutcraft Clan Wars, and um, most most notably, I think he, he's just really. I think he was one of the first, he and Kane were kind of the first guys to on our team at least to uh, sort of utilize that. Hey, I can run two banelings down from the south side, from the other yep. side, and catch them off guard. And uh, as a result, they've had a lot of success on uh, on that map in particular, and yeah. uh, actually getting written by by Smile here as well. He's getting very pumped for his match, which is, of course, going to come up third. But for our second match, I believe this is going to be the Life versus J-Power matchup. Indeed. Yep. Life versus J-Power. ZVP on Neo Kero. We've seen quite a few ZVPs on this match. Protoss 
do quite like this map. They certainly don't mind it at all. Life is going to be an extremely tough opponent for J-Power. I'm sorry. There's no other way of looking at it. This is a yeah. David versus Goliath kind of situation. The way I kind of see it, and uh, I was talking to J-Power about this, the way J-Power sees it as well is, like he, I think the phrase he used was, I've been working really, really hard, so I think I have a 3% chance of winning now. <laughs> well, if he manages to upset life in this matchup, not only is that going to put my insanity in a really good position going forward, but that's going to be the thing that single-handedly puts him on the map for a lot of people. So it's a good opportunity. You know, not many people are expecting him to win it, but that's the cool thing about matches like this. If he does win it, then what a boost. What a boost. Yeah, there's not really a lot of pressure here. And no. uh, a big thing for J-Power as well is that he played against Vortex in the Acer Team Story Cup when we unfortunately got all killed by, Vo uh, by Vortex uh, when we played Mouse Sports. But uh, he was one of the players, I think he was the first one out of the gate against Vortex. And he really wanted a chance to show off his PVZ. His PVZ is his best matchup by far. He's really, really solid in it. And he kind of got cheesed out really, really fast. So he wanted another chance to just sort of show his uh, his PVZ in a, in a macro kind of environment so he's hoping that he can get a, a macro game out of life here life of course a guy who does throw in cheeses but if we can get to a macro game i'm confident that j power will at the very least show a very entertaining game well i guess we'll find out after the break folks you're watching shoutcraft clan wars game two is on the way right after these messages thank you very much for watching remember to click the follow button to be notified of any future clan wars so that you don't end up missing anything very handy indeed and of course we also have a mobile app available for mlg tv we'll be right back don't go anywhere Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars. We are going into the next map right here, and the heavy weapons have been deployed for Startail. After a bit of a slap in the face in the first match, they now roll out life to take on the newcomer, J-Power. Yeah, and I'm actually really looking forward to this, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we saw Serral take the first game, mostly because I think the next three games are kind of the ones where, if you look at the lineups, you think... Yeah, this is not exactly my Insanity's A-team, because it's myself, Nerox in the 2v2, Smile, and then J-Power, and those two are actually Academy players as well, coming up against, well, opponents who are all Koreans and very, very solid players in their own right. So, seeing Serral take the first game means that we will at least get to see Balloon, which is important, because I always like to see what Balloon spawns as and see, how, see what kind of cool strategies he can roll out. But uh, for this game in particular, this one, I'm, this is probably the one I've been looking forward to most. It is definitely an underdog story, isn't it? It's pretty cool when we see Startail play, because every time they put out Legend, it's almost an underdog story in and of itself. But what we saw last time he went out is that he actually went blow for blow with Super, which conventional wisdom says he shouldn't have been able to do. But actually, he was. So it seems like Legend is a hell of a lot better than we gave him credit for. But now we have J-Power versus Life. Uh, what is... Has J-Power actually won anything online, any kind of tournaments? What's, what are his accomplishments, if any? Uh, his most recent accomplishment is that uh, he won a Swiss LAN called the Poly LAN, which is the okay. biggest Swiss LAN in the year, uh, where he took out uh, a moderately notable player in Elroy. He beat him in two best of five series. Okay. And Elroy is a guy who came within one round of qualifying for WCS EU Challenger, I think, three times this, this season. Like, Elroy's a very, very solid player, and he's a Zerg player, and that speaks to J-Power's PVZ. Recently, J Power is also competing in the Dutch StarCraft League, where he was able to 2 0 Goody to advance to the round of 16. Uh, he did lose 2 0 to Golden, though. And overall, he's a really good player. He hasn't really had the breakout he needs yet, but I have confidence that he's going to have one soon because he's doing really, really well. That's an early pro going out here. Let's see where he's going to put that pylon. Looks like he'll want to do the Forge Wall off. I suppose it just depends in which order. But let's introduce our players before we begin to the southwest position of Neo Karu in the blue trunks representing my insanity. It's J Power. And his opponent in the top right, spawning as our Red Zerg player, going for a 10 pool for Star Tail. It's going to be life. The multi-champion, triple crown holder, royal roader, all-round badass. He's still not even 20 years old yet. Life taking on J-Power. A mismatch certainly on paper, but Clan Wars has proven that that doesn't really matter. If you prepare enough for a matchup, you can do pretty much whatever you want. This looks like this will be the double hatch cancellation. That's exactly what it is. And life wants to end this really, really early. But the forge is going up here for J-Power. Will he be able to get the wall off in time? Yeah, J Power does not want to be cheesed again, and I mentioned it before in the uh, in the in the break. But uh, J Power got cheesed out of ATC by Vortex and really wanted a chance when he wanted to have a good chance to show off his PVZ, and 
He's not going to let that happen again. He's going for the Saber Forge opening, and this is actually going to go pretty well for him. He should be able to have a cannon down in time to deal with this, especially when he comes in and sees these lings popping. Uh, actually, he's going to be able to see this, the uh, pool timing before the lings even pop. So overall, yep. this should be pretty good for J-Power. He's going to go into the game with a very minor lead. Yep, and every lead you can get against a player like Life is very important. And honestly, not even a player with Life's Ling control is going to get past that wall. That's not happening, surely. I mean, it would require a colossal mistake from J-Power. Yeah, and it actually looks like the cannon is going to be done before the Lings even get there, because this is not really the shortest rush distance map of all time either. And no. it looks like Life even misplaced his hatchery and was forced to cancel and rebuild it, which wow. is another 75 minerals down the drain for him. So things are just not really starting out all too well for our Zerg player. No, no, they are not. And it is not exactly what you would expect from a player like Life. But as we have said before, uh, Startail signed up for a clan war that started at 6 a.m. KST. Now, a lot of players do get up at that time. In fact, you know, for the longest time, Axiom was getting up at 6 a.m. No problem at all. But it really depends. Oh, God, he did it. He bloody well did it. Uh, how, many, how many times have we doubted life's ling ability? And it's just, oh, a wall? I, I'm not too concerned about that. And he's in the main. <laughs> Yeah, J-Power tried to throw down a, a pile on the block behind it, but the Lings did get in just in time. And four Lings is a lot of Lings when you have life's Ling control. And J-Power's yep. going to try his best to micro these back, but he's already lost two probes. He's got a Zealot that's out now that's going to be able to come to the main and try to lend a little bit of assistance here. And with one Ling near dead, J-Power should be able to kill that off at least reasonably soon. But he's already losing a lot of mining time here to these really annoying Zerglings. Yep, and life's link control, as we said, is absolutely superb. We shouldn't overstate, though, what he was able to accomplish here. It's great that he got in. He certainly did some damage. But he still started with a suboptimal opening. And I, in your experience, as someone that certainly has played this race a few times in the past... If you open 10 pool and this is the amount of damage you got done, would you be happy with it? Or would you say, oh, I'm still playing catch up? Um, it, you're happy with it insofar as you can keep the lings alive for quite a while, which is what life is doing. Because basically this is preventing J-Power from doing anything particularly sneaky. And if you're J-Power, you're going up against life. You probably wanted to do something sneaky to try to get ahead. Try to go maybe for Dark, Sh Dark Templar or go for an Oracle or something like that. And anything sure. that's in that kind of vein is not really gonna be an option because life's gonna scout it as soon as it comes on out and he's may even pick up another probe down here which is gonna be number five but no j power or actually he's got, be number he's got seven pills already yeah, he's, he's, ah, i see the scouting worker just died yeah i think well definitely six six workers along with all that lost mining time yeah. i think is definitely enough and that's, oh yeah let's put life right back in it oh i made the mistake of doubting life apparently life <laughs> did indeed eat his weetabix this morning so life he, always finds a way he does indeed he's looking like he's on point we're gonna see a cereal sponsor from those guys momentarily either that or very strong coffee i don't say yeah. one way or the <laughs> other but these guys are up early to play in the clan wars of course it's their you know their choice they they're not forced to sign up for any of them but startel said yeah we want to play the one that starts at 6 a.m kst i'm like all right well oh better bring your a game then and J Power going for the stargate here now that the lings have finally been cleaned up i mean at the seven minute mark at the seven minute mark, after, you know, those ended at what? Three, three and a half minutes? They've been running around the base for the last four minutes. Uh, there's uh, some yeah. impressive link control there from life to say the least. And now he's droning heavily. He has a significant worker lead and is going into a roach war in an evo chamber. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to be seeing a roach centric play out of life. And I like the decision to go for a roach war in here because, again, J Power as the underdog here, as the guy who's going to be trying to pull a fast one probably to, to sort of catch life off guard it's not really unfathomable for him to be trying to put on some kind of aggression and roaches do very very well against any kind of gateway aggression any kind of mass gateway all in you're going to need roaches to hold any kind of plus one four gate aggression anything like that uh it is going to be phoenixes out of j power so he's not going to be opting for any kind of mass gateway pressure but just going for the roaches is sort of allowing life to cover more of his bases J-Power gonna get a little bit greedy by the looks of it. He is sitting around thinking about that third Nexus. And we have seen Protoss take this third Nexus quite quickly on this map. And it, it does make a reasonable degree of sense. Until those rocks are down, it's fairly easy to keep an eye on the ways in. It's not, it's not too difficult. And he does have those Phoenixes available for scouting information. Picking off Overlords, which is exactly what he's doing with it right now. 
And he's, he is going to go for that third base. The question is, will a bunch of roaches come a knock in from life? He just built another 10 drones. He's getting up to that kind of nice little number. He's adding Burrow and the Gleal Reconstitution upgrade in there as well. So I have a feeling he's going to get aggressive pretty quickly. I really like the addition of Burrow as well, especially against Phoenixes. Oftentimes you will see somebody maybe go for a bit of a delayed robo and there isn't a robo coming in for j power but he could also go into something like immortal production straight mm. away to try to help hold off against roaches and if he doesn't have any kind of detection out burrow is going to make those Very roaches strong. so much more useful yeah not to mention the fact that you can borrow micro against those things like phoenixes of course you could bring out an oracle but it's not really what you want to be spending your gas at that point if you're if you've got roaches knocking on your door you want immortals out as you mentioned he's going straight to robo bay actually he wants to try and get the colossus out he may be taking a little bit too heavily. I'm slightly concerned, actually, at this point. Now the Roach production is in full swing. Five more Overlords being added on to allow life to come and knock on that door. That third base is certainly under threat. There is a Mothership Core available. It does just about have enough energy for one Photon Overcharge. I actually think that will be enough to ward off this first wave of Roaches here. It's going to be really, really difficult when more reinforcements come on in. But with a Void Ray popping on out and an Immortal as well... I feel like it's not going to be too difficult for J-Power to survive to start things off. He does get the plus one upgrade here, but there needs to be an overcharge somewhere. Looks like he can't quite decide where to use that with this mothership one. Well, it's risky, isn't it? You know, he took a third base, and life makes his way in there. He's going to get a couple of sentries out of this, so he's not going to be too unhappy about that at all. And the, the photon overcharge is finally being used, but the problem is, of course, that then you just swing around to the third base and knock on that instead, and damage is being done here. There's a void ray out, there's an immortal out. The immortal almost fell there, but the probes are going to be bravely fighting here. But there's the burrow, and of course, with no detection, there's that knock on the door of the third base. Yeah, these roaches over at the third will pick off the cannon as well, which means no detection there either. So even if some defense comes over there to help that out, he's going to be able to really continue laying on the herd. He's not going to be able to be killed off, really. And life taking about double the supply of J power at the moment. He's continuing to power roach after roach after My roach God. while teching up behind this. This is not looking good for my insanity. No, it's not. It's actually brutal. Roaches picking off immortals in small groups. You never see that. Bird roaches. There's roaches in all three bases right now. And J Power certainly regretting the gateway placement here because they're about to get shut down. So even if he wants to bring in his reinforcements, it's going to be struggling. And life just showing dominance throughout all of this here. Even in a situation where his opening bill was not what it needed to be. And life knocks on the door. And that's the GG. And it is now one apiece. Startail and my insanity tie it up. Yeah, life really showing the expertise that is necessary to become a multiple-time champion like he is really well played out of him there. And a lot of that, I think, did come down to those links getting into the main early on. He delayed the, the tech potentially from J-Power. I have a feeling J-Power would have probably wanted to have that Stargate up earlier, but didn't quite want to give it away. He got damage done and overall put himself in a great position where if you get behind against a player like life, it's going to be really hard to claw your way back. Yes, it is. And even if you are ahead of a player like Life, Life always finds a way. He is able to make things happen with units that he shouldn't have any right to do. But he pulls it off, and that's why he's a Royal Rotor. That's why he's a Triple Crown Champion. And unfortunately, j is going to have to wait another day in order to make that big splash. But now it's one apiece here in the Clan Wars, and Legend will step up to the plate. The number one observer in the world. Sorry, out of BC Legends, just a little bit, a little bit better. Not by too much, but honestly, in an Adabisi versus Legend best of seven, I'd probably give it to Legend. So he is going to be going up against a player that, frankly, I don't know too much about. He goes by the name of Smile from My Insanity, and we'll talk a little bit about his chances right after the break. You're watching Shoutcraft Clan Wars MYI mm -hmm, versus Startail. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back indeed to Shoutcraft Clan Wars right here on MLG TV. And our next matchup will be Legend versus Smile. I'm just getting Smile into the lobby and then we'll kick it off there. Excellent, he just joined in. We're going to have a TVT between these two. So tell me a little bit about Smile. Smile is a Peruvian player. Uh, he's been with my insanity for... I want to say around a year now. He's been in our B team basically since the B team was introduced and then it was renamed as the Academy, which sounds better. Yes, and, uh, I tend to agree. Yeah. So he's on the Academy right now. He's really actually shown a lot of improvement in the last couple of months. He's Grandmaster on the North American server on his Smurf account. Um, I believe he's pushing top 100 at the moment. And he's been practicing a lot with Balloon for this match. So I actually think that... Uh, 
he has something planned. He told me in the sort of pre-game chat that he's practiced this game, uh, this map a ton. Star Tale Legend doesn't have a chance, and he's really hyped up and he wants to take this game. Well, Legend is certainly looking to take a game. He would, I think, he want to do that for his own personal and professional pride more so than anything else. He is an observer. You know, he is not a technically a pro gamer, but he still wants to get the wins and. You know, I can tell you this for a fact, as someone that owns a Korean team, Korean players get really, really naffed off when they lose to foreigners. And it doesn't matter if you're a GSL Observer or a GSL Triple Champion. You're going to get pissed off about that. So, Legend has something to prove here. And, of course, Smile wants to put his name on the board for my insanity and prove that he is indeed worthy of that A-team squad. So, the question is, will he be able to prove that today? To the... That's not going to help you. <laughs> that That is not going to give you the boost that you need. Uh, He's trying to ingratiate himself with you. I hope you won't accept that. That's highly unprofessional. It's the third My Insanity player asking me to marry them this week. I'm not sure what's going on. Mm, it is possible that you just want giant big man whore. You know, I'm just going to say that out loud. <laughs> I just want to make that aware of you. All right. That's a... Hmm. That was a bit weird. I was like, hang on a minute. Smile's not building a supply depot. It's probably because he was too busy typing out his marriage proposal to you. Regardless, to the southwest position in the red trunks, playing for Team Startail as Terran, it's Legend. And spawning in the top right spawn location, we have our pink Terran player for my insanity. It is Smile. Yes, indeed. TBT on Neo Jungle Valley. We generally don't see that at all. It's it's a map that Protoss like to play. We've seen a few PvPs on here, but it's not like New Pompeii where almost 95%, in fact, actually 95% of the matches have actually been that mirror. In this case, TBT, we just... Terran players just don't seem to play this map all that often. Yeah, so, we had I don't know how this plays out. I, I, we had a TBT with Jockji versus Bunny. Yeah. But uh, this is basically our Jockji map most of the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, he's done very well with that. I think... Bunny was the only Terran he's played, though. Like you said, Terrans don't generally like this map, but uh, Jachi likes it because of the Reaper usage. And, um, well, it looks like Legend and Smile could both opt for that kind of a Reaper play. Actually, it looks like Legend went for gas first, so it looks like he's going to be going up to a fast factory. Funky um, funky stuff coming out here from Smile. He's dumped down a second barracks right here, having taken that gas early. That smells like double racks Reaper to me. It does, and that's a strategy that Jachi has utilized on this map quite a lot already. So. Yes. Uh, I'm not too surprised to see this coming out of Smile. I know he was playing around with this and a Banshee Rush build. He wasn't quite sure what to use, but I actually think this is going to be better for the spawn locations. I think in the cross spawns, Banshee would have taken a little bit longer to get there because you're going to probably want to scout one of the near locations first. And overall, this is going to be interesting to see how this pans out because Legend, of course, going for that kind of a Banshee build, if he makes a, uh, if he makes a Hellion or two, he could be in a really good spot here question is will he do that because if he doesn't build a reaper which he's not by the way you now he hasn't got one then he is completely blind going forward he has no way of getting across this map those who do not know this is a semi-island map the whole thing is walled off it is a map for huge amounts of greed but it's also a map where if you get too greedy you can end up getting hit really hard by a very clever build now, Legend is coming up with a build of his own. He is going for the Starport. As you mentioned, Banshee is likely. But he is also building a factory, and he's got the Hellion on the way out. So, this this is pretty good. I'm interested to see whether Smile actually goes in with the first Reaper, or whether he waits for all three before he engages. Obviously, he's scouting now. He is going to find out momentarily. Oh, he sees it. Oh, yeah. he takes a lot. Oh, he's going to lose that Reaper. He's not yeah, careful. He's able to get it up into the high ground there to keep it alive for at least a little bit longer. Looks like he's going to try to run across, but that Hellion's going to pick that off. And losing the first Reaper is pretty big here. It's going to be a medevac play out of Legend. So right. Smile could actually do quite a lot of damage with Reaper counter aggression once those units leave the base. But overall, mm -hmm. this kind of a build is thus far going to be favoring Legend. He's got a bit of an advantage here, and it looks like Smile actually wants to defend for the most part with these Reapers. Yeah, what did he see? Well, it should be obvious. He saw something had begun building on a starport with no add-ons. So that immediately says that is either the weirdest fake that you've seen in a while, or this is clearly not going to be a Banshee in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So the only other possibility is it's a drop. He already saw Marines and Heli. It's like, well, it's actually a bit of an old classic drop and a classic one base opening, that being the four Marine and two Hellion drop. 
and he will follow up with a Banshee, which is sneaky in and of itself, but that forces those Reapers back, and they're going to have to defend against this. Are there enough units to do it? Uh, there should so. be. There should be, yeah. Yeah, with the two racks opening, he, the Reapers, of course, they're, they're going to be nice for kind of buffer as well as dealing some damage. There's only two Hellions in this with four Marines. With the two racks opening, Smile should have enough to deal with this. The biggest thing is going to be taking the lowest amount of damage he possibly can while trying to defend the fact that he has a bit of an economic lead with that second CC coming up. A bit of damage being dealt here. Mm. The Reaper's going to be able to come on in, trying to focus on the Hellions. That's going to be very, very important here. And the Medivac forced to lift on up. Yep, Reapers really, really wish they could shoot up at this point. But the Medivac is now at about half health, so... It's a bit of a risk to bring it back in. I feel Smile could have probably defended that better. He did lose a couple of workers. The Medivac did actually pass over the Supply Depot to the south, so he should have been able to respond quicker than he did. But it's the second wave that's important here, and that is, of course, the Banshee with the Cloak, and a second Banshee will follow that one up here. Cloaking Field will be done by the time that comes in. The drop comes back in again here from Legend, who... If he had both his Hellions, would have had a great opportunity to roast some Marines in that narrow corridor there. But he only has one, so he doesn't want to risk keeping his Medivac around here. But it is now time for Cloaked Banshee. Oh no, there's no there's no scans. He's used nope. both of his scans. He's not oh, seen this coming brutal. at all. He got he's, played. Yeah, Smile's going to need to do a lot of counter damage here with these three Reapers to make this worthwhile. This is a bit of a disaster. There's no scans for the next 20 seconds or so. And overall, well, let's see how much damage these Reapers can do. They are actually coming in. There's actually not much defense here for Legend either. This is becoming a bit of a weird situation here. Looks like more Marines are going to be able to pop on out. One of the Reapers will go down, but some damage is being dealt. It is indeed. We'll count the cost as both of these players do engage. Smile, I think, is certainly coming off a hell of a lot worse, though. This Banshee's on 15 kills. A scan comes in, but a second Banshee comes in, too. And kind of at the wrong time. It takes a little bit of damage, but... He should be able to bring that back in. There will be another scan available. This drop has... Oh, that is a perfect little corridor to fight in. But down goes the Hellion eventually. And this is going to get cleaned up. But as we say many times before, at what cost? 15, 16 workers killed now. And a hell of a lot of economic damage inflicted here by Legend's build. And he's expanding behind it as well. And yeah. while the second CC is up here for Smile, <coughs> he's going to be playing a lot of catch-up. And in a mirror match, that's difficult to do. It really is going to be difficult to do, and uh, the, the second Banshee gets away as well, forcing out a second scan there, and overall, I feel like Legend could have done more damage there, but he definitely did enough to justify the cost of that, and uh, kind of surprise Banshee transition, and from here, Smile, like you said, is going to be playing a lot of catch-up, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to come back into this, and one little advantage he could try to get is that his engineering bay is done earlier, he could try to get a bit of an upgrade lead, but he's not actually utilizing that just yet. Well, Legend uh, has had enough. He's uh, pushing forward with tanks, which is something that Smile does not currently possess. And Legend has three of them and a Banshee already. So this is, I mean, everything's in Legend's favor right now. There's not even a question about it. If this was a non-mirror, then maybe you could argue asymmetry. But this is a mirror match. And if Smile were to look in the mirror right now, he would not like what he sees. And Legend is on the way over to the other side of the map. This will only delay him a short time. With that amount of tank firepower, it's going to break through those rocks very quickly. And that could unfortunately be a very, very brutal end to Smile here. I just, I cannot see how he could possibly hold this. Yeah, he will have one tank out probably on the high ground by the time this hits. But one tank against three, even with Defender's Advantage, is going to be very difficult to make that work. And tank's going to come down to the low ground here. Stim is done for Smile, while it's not quite done for Legend, but the fact of the matter is there's not actually that many units to utilize Stim yeah. here. So, while that's a small advantage, it's just that. It's a small advantage to try to make up for this 30 supply deficit that he's sitting at, which is just not really going to be easy for him to hold this. I, I, I no. feel like Legend would have to make a pretty colossal mistake to not win the game right here. Yeah, Legend did just lose his Banshee, so Smile was able to shut that down before it did any oh, more damage. Wow. Smile's Legend... leaving with a medevac. This is not, this that... not ideal. No, he needs every unit at home possible here. And perhaps he's just hoping that his opponent is getting really, really greedy and saying, Hey, yeah, I'm going to throw down a third CC. I'm going to start teching up with double upgrades. No, no, Legend knows he has really drawn a lot of blood here, that Smile is bleeding out badly and that he wants to finish off the prey. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to move into position. He has a huge tank advantage. I feel he could just A, move in here 
And uh, he's, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going right for it here. The Stim did finish for Legend. And he is going to fight this. He brutalizes the remains of the defense. Maybe those eight extra Marines in the Medivac would have helped. But the Naturals compromise now. And Smile is in a world of trouble. As Legend rolls forward for his first victory here in Shoutcraft Clan Wars. He's going to be very happy with that indeed. And that is the GG. Legend picks one up for Startail. And now I think he can truly say he's a real pro gamer. Yeah, he's definitely going to be happy with that. Uh, Smile still waiting on his breakout performance. It's his second chance to play in sort of a premier team environment. He did also play against Axiom and ATC, against Impact, where, again, he showed a... He, he put up a fight, but he wasn't able to close it out. So that's going to be it for Smile today, unfortunately. But uh, I'm sure we'll see more of him in the future. He's done a lot of improving, and oh well. It I happens. Guess. Yep. I guess that's going to be it for me. I have to go play now. I'll be back yes. after my game, I guess. Indeed, yes. I'll be casting your 2v2. You'll be going up alongside Neroxus, and you're going up against... I mean, if I were to call this team anything, I'd call it Try Hard. It's life and hack on Sacred Path. So, anyone who thought the Koreans aren't taking 2v2 seriously, that have... You know, I'd say that lasted for about a week, and then they realized, oh yeah, we've actually got to practice this, and now suddenly they're really good at it, so... Watch out. This is going to be a tough match. Can Penguin and Aroxas make it happen? We'll find out after the break, folks. Don't go anywhere. This is Shoutcraft Clan Wars. Startail leads two games to one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars right here on MLG TV. We will be going into the next game momentarily. I've had to kick off my co-caster because he's going to play now. We've got the 2v2 between Hack and Life versus Penguin and Aroxas. Again, a bit of a mismatch on paper, but it's 2v2. That means pretty much anything can happen. Life has played 2v2 before in the Shoutcraft Clan Wars, and he was monstrous in this matchup. Hack is monstrous in every matchup. He's great. He's so underrated, and that annoys me. He's such a good Terran player, and he's constantly overshadowed, and that, that just bothers me. I remember watching him when he was playing for Xenex, and he was absolutely awesome. He was just winning those Team Liquid Weekly Cups. He was a, just a monster. And he still is. He's absolutely great. So, can he and Life take out Penguin and Aroxas? It's currently two games to one in favor of Startail. Startail really would love to win the 2v2 because that gives them a huge advantage going forward into the rest of the series. Whereas the 2v2 for the foreign teams is generally a bit of a wild card. And it's something that can be very easily taken by a foreign team. And a point that's just as good as any other point on the board. Yeah. Put J-Power against life, he might struggle. Put a 2v2 team against a 2v2 team containing life, that's a different matter entirely. That's not life's ballpark, I suppose. It's not the kind of thing that he is really invested in too much. He's a competitive player, you know. He is playing at the highest possible level. That's what he's focused on, and that highest possible level is not 2v2. So, we will see what happens here. Anything could happen. The 2v2s lately have been absolutely amazing, so I'm hoping they will continue to be. Life confirms that he's ready. Hack confirms ready. We're just waiting for Penguin and the Roxas. And then we'll rock and roll on this one. My anxiety needs it, though. If they don't get it, this is what they have to deal with. Yeah, They will have to go match point, relying on Hack versus Balloon, which really is kind of a dice roll as to whether or not Balloon will get a good race. You know, If he gets Protoss, I definitely fancy his chances against Hack. If he gets anything else, it's going to be a tough road for him. And then, of course, you've got Kane versus Pet, which actually I think is the a very strong matchup for my insanity. Kane could very easily take that. So they would really love to pick this one up. It would be great. Would be great. They don't want to go to the ace match if at all possible, because if they if we end up seeing life coming out a third time here for Startail, then things could get absolutely crazy. All right, we are loading in, folks. The next match is going to be a blinder, certainly. It's going to be a good one. It could not fail to be so, because it is the 2v2, which is always awesome. How good are Penguin and Neroxus at this match? It will be a ZBT versus ZBT. Neroxus usually actually plays Zerg, but in 2v2 he plays Terran. Is that going to be a disadvantage for him, that he's effectively off-racing here against godlike players in the form of Life and Hack? We'll find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sacred Path, the winner of the 2v2 Team Liquid map contest, and rightfully so. Let's be honest, it's the only competitive 2v2 map that currently exists, and has the highest possible level of players on it. So, someone who'll be playing against those highest possible levels is this guy. No offense to him, 
But this is a bit of a mismatch, and he's got, he's got a lot to prove here. In the southeast position, playing for Team My Insanity. In the red trunks, playing Zerg, it's Penguin. And his teammate in the blue trunks, playing Terran, it's Neroxus. Versus their opponents, the terrifying duo. Life was once described as l'enfant terrible. Rightfully so. Terrible is how I would describe my Francais. In the light blue trunks, playing Zerg, it is life. And his teammate for Startail in the purple trunks playing Terran, it's Hack. Also known as Life Hacks. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd almost say they did that on purpose. Now, Roxas, what are you up to? Okay, are we actually going to see My Insanity adopt the MVP build? It is possible. Or will I actually go for something that is... Uh, that's the actually the Axiom build, by the looks of it which is to go for the double barracks wall off in the center. So the center area is extremely important to control, as you can probably imagine. And there are a number of different schools of thought as to how to do that. MVP's method that we saw recently was a proxy barrack slightly out of the way, which is much harder to scout with, say, an overlord or indeed cancel because it's harder to find, and then a bunker and using that for control rather than a full on wall off. And we're going to see not a full wall off from Naroxus as of yet. He's scouting first. He wants to get an idea of what's going on. I imagine he'd put a second one down if he saw an early pull. But life isn't doing that. Life is going hatch first. So we're not seeing anything crazy out of him. Penguin is going for an earlier pull. But it's still not crazy. It's not a 10 pull or anything like that. So we're actually going to see a fairly calm game up to this point. Gas is out, though, and Hack has a lot of it. Well, if it was not a gas first, this would be around 50 gas that he'd have here. But, as you can clearly see, he wants to go straight into factory. Now, what build is popular on this map for going gas first for Terran? It is Banshee. Banshee is very popular on this map. It's an extremely good build. The reason being that in other 2v2 maps, you can often very easily reinforce your opponent. But on this map... You are divided from your opponent. You have separate bases. So Banshees suddenly become a lot more effective because they can bypass the cliffs and, of course, bypass the wall off in the center here. Airplay is preferred. What is Naroxus going to do? He's actually going to build a proxy factory as well, which is interesting. Hack with the successful scout and penguin. See, he's nothing really out of the ordinary. He sees that there is... He's going to lose that SCB, but he does see that there is... Only in gas. And in the meantime, Naroxus has actually put up a bunker to pressure life here. He only has one marine in it, though. And he's actually showing no sign of trying to get anything else out of it. I wonder if he was trying to just force life to overreact. But life's not going to be doing any of that. It's going to take about five hours for the marine to kill that. So I think what's happening here is that these guys are just trying to secure it. They're putting a little bit of pressure on. They're trying, just trying to keep life honest here. And life just caught wonders past the bunker, which is now covered in horrible goop. And this is going to be the Banshee. There's the swap over going on here. The engagement coming into the center of the map here. Life actually has the lead in speed. Penguin actually never started it. So that could be pretty brutal. Hack reinforcing here. Penguin now also coming in to try and kill this hatchery. He's probably going to get the queen here, I would imagine. But he decides to pull back regardless. Hack and Life now moving their way back in, and they're going to have speed momentarily, so this attack isn't actually going to do much as soon as this goes in. The Banshee is on the way, Cloak is on the way as well, and Life just absolutely destroys that. Life already is up to a ludicrous number of links, gets the surround, crushes the bunker no problem at all. He knows he's absolutely fine against that, but that wasn't much of an investment from these guys. This is an interesting defensive setup here as well. Narox is looking to collapse the rocks. And this is what life does. And he's doing it with Hack's back up here. He's just going to find another hole in the wall. He's going to make his way through. He, life has pulled this before on this map, and it's worked very well for him. Banshee is now out here for Hack. It's on the way. So what exactly is Naroxus trying to do? He's staying on one base. He's supply blocked. He is clearing that up momentarily. But the Banshee is already on the way. Penguin, for some reason, has not built a spore crawler. I do not understand why Zerg don't build spores on this map. If you're playing against the Terran 95% of the time on this map, they are going to pull out a Banshee. And that's exactly what Hack is doing. He's going to have Cloak momentarily. He's going to do significant damage to Penguin's economy here. That Queen is probably going to die. Although the Queen did get a couple of shots off earlier. So it may be possible. Nope. And Penguin blinks first. The Banshee is the one that will kill that. There's Roaches on the way up here for Penguin as well. But look at this. You can see they're trying to make their way through. And Naroxus realizes it. He sets up Widow Mines in position. But he's going to have to pull back and try and defend against this. And he is severely outnumbered. 
We're going to need those roaches to come in and reinforce immediately, but life's going to break through here. I wonder if he sees the... Oh, he sees the winter mines. And there's the two detonations going off, and the flood comes in. Wow! The Hellions are just carried away in the flood of Zerglings as life just goes ham on this one with 55 Speedlings. Surrounds everything. Oh, rocks fall on the bunker and destroy it. Everything going horribly wrong here. For my insanity, the cloaked Banshee in the base is doing damage. The second Banshee comes in to do damage as well. Sporecrawler did get up here, but it's a bazillion lings right now coming right at Naroxus. He's not even walled off. He has nothing to defend this with. The Banshee is on the way. Naroxus does pull out, but it doesn't matter. GG and Startail with a very swift win here. And <laughs> life does always find a way. He loves this map. And his strategy has always been very simple. Build a lot of lings, find a place where you aren't, break through the rocks, and your nonsense in the center of the map makes no difference at all. And there's the win for My Insanity. A nice, not for Startail, sorry. And My Insanity is now on match point. They are struggling here against Startail. Of course, they weren't able to bring some of their really heavy hitters today. Stardust and Jack 2 are not available. And as a result, well, My Insanity are in a bit of trouble. They fielded a team that wasn't their A-team and they're suffering. And now they're relying on Balloon. Balloon needs to be able to beat Hack in order to give Kane a shot at taking out Pet. And Kane has a very good chance of taking out Pet. His ZBZ is very good. But it's all on Balloon now. Can Balloon save my insanity from a bit of a drubbing? Hands of Startail. We've got to find out after the break, folks. It will be Balloon playing random. Rolling the dice. Against Startail Hack on Wrecking Ball. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shoutcraft Clan Wars right here on MLG TV. Potentially the last map of the day, and it's all in the hands of the dice. We have the one and only Balloon taking the stage versus his former teammate Startail Hack. And we also have Penguin back on the call. Well, that Hello. was quick. Yeah, that didn't quite go according to plan. Uh, we, light, we kind of sneaky. YOLO'd with the bunker rush. Like, we, like, <laughs> Nerox was like, oh, it's a hatch first, let's try to bunker rush! <laughs> well, usually you need more than one marine in the bunker in yeah. order to make that work, so it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I, I think the idea, like, the idea was to get him to overmake lings, which he did, but then our rock watching was not really what it should have been. Yeah, life is, life's done that before. Like, forcing life to overmake lings is like forcing life to suddenly have a million dollars. It's like, here, have this money. It's like, wow, that's really kind. It's like, yes, but you might trip over the money at some point. Like, no, no, yeah. but I still have lots of money. Uh, we had a really cool build planned out. Uh, basically, the entire talk was, well, if we can survive the Ling Hellion, this build will be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, it's, it's certainly a map that still needs to be figured out, but it's cool that we're seeing all sorts of different builds on uh, that particular 2v2 map. Like People ask, like, when are you going to replace the 2v2 map? It's like, why on earth would I? It's hilarious. Are you kidding me? There's so many great games that come out of the 2v2. Some of them end pretty quickly, but the meta evolves in a really cool way. And there's a lot of Korean going on in the chat right now. I recognize only what Balloon is doing, which is a lot of laughing. So I'm <laughs> not sure what else is going on other than the laughing here. <laughs> well, I'm very interested to see how this one pans out. Because, of course, Balloon is random player. He is. Yes, he is a random player. And that's that's crazy. But Balloon is also crazy. And the pretty much the only pro-level random player. And can actually yeah. win as random, no doubt. You know, he's in, he is a grandmaster player in Korea. That's not to be sniffed at as random. No, not at all. And he's actually doing pretty well right now. He is top 100 at this. He also regularly ladders NA. Uh, not quite sure if he's been doing that too much recently, since he, he was mainly doing that for the wildcard qualifier for WCS. Yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, but sitting top 100 in Korea GM, not bad. No, not at all. Especially when very, the top 30 well are all innovation. <laughs> Every last one of them. Just all innovation yeah. smurfs. But yeah, he's been doing very well for us. Um, most uh, commonly, I guess, not notably, but most commonly, uh, Balloon is just kind of there to ace for us in the StarCraft II Improved Team League, which mm -hmm. is not that easy a job, because generally we use that as kind of an opportunity to, to let some of our lesser fielded players get a chance players, to play. Yeah. So the Academy players and the, the weaker A-team players like myself, because technically I'm on the A-team. And... Uh, Overall, yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes it for a little bit of a tough job for the actual good players who come out and have to clean up after us. But, so he does pretty well there. Uh, recently, he's also been eligible to play for us in ATC. He's played twice. Yes. 
And uh, I think he, he's won two in results. He, he lost to Hero versus Liquid and uh, was able to take out Xenocider versus EG. All right. And he got Zerg. All right. Well, let's see what he can make with that because he is the last man standing right here. And mind that you're going to need a win out of him. Otherwise, that will be a swift end to the... <laughs> 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 this is apparently a thing for this clown war. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> what on earth is going on at the Mind Sanity House? Actually, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Uh, Although, I have been told if you're in need of team finances, that stuff does sell very well to certain niches <laughs> of the population. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrecking Ball, which is misnamed on the Korean server as GH Testing Ziggity. We have yet to figure out why that is. <laughs> We've got the one and only Balloon in the purple trunks. He's playing random and he rolled into Zerg. He's the north representing my insanity. He is the last man standing. They will need him in order to continue in this war and get to that sweet spot where Kane can go ham in the Zerg versus Zerg matchup, which he's known for doing. But he's up against that tough opponent. Frequently underrated, often overlooked, but should not be ignored. The skill is clear in the red trunks. Playing Terran, Startail Hack. Yeah, and he's definitely a formidable foe here, but mm -hmm. one thing that I have to look at with this map is that this map is pretty decent for Zerg in that it's very, very open. But we can't see it right now because it's in the fog of war, but there's a tech lab and there's a reactor somewhere on this map yep. and around the middle. And I have to wonder if putting a Terran on this map means that Hack has something planned with those. Possibly. We've only seen QXC try to pull that off so far, and <laughs> it, it, it just didn't work very well. On a, uh, wow! Balloon. balloon! Going for the proxy hatch. This is actually really cool for this map, and I want to point out yeah. why. Because the natural expansion is on the high ground. It is. Which means... Oh, he's gonna be oh, he, no, he sees it. Oh, he, he sees, sees it. it. He does see it. Oh, that would have been brutal if he hadn't, gonna... but he does see this. I'm going to have to ask the map maker to slightly widen the ramp so he doesn't see it in future, because that's hilarious. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, seeing this is going to prompt Hack to pull an additional five SCVs to shut this down before it actually finishes up, which yeah. is important because this is not going to allow Balloon to get a queen out. It's not going to allow him to creep block. But this does mean that for now, Hack's income is significantly stymied. It is indeed. And you can see the difference between the two. It's quite significant. There was a video, actually, that said how many workers you had to pull in order to stop a hatchery at certain levels. I can't quite remember if this is the right number. I think it's almost the right number, but honestly, I think that creep will go down here. Yeah, and yeah, Hack realizes he's actually not pulled enough. This is kind of interesting, though. I'm wondering if Balloon is going to let it finish or get the 225 minerals back. Now, That's a good the question. creep is really important because it takes a long time to subside, even if the hatchery is killed off very he soon. Let it he will let it finish. And that's going to take well over a minute to subside, which is a pretty, pretty big deal here. I'm interested to oh, and Haxit might lose SCVs here. Oh, he's going to lose a Marine to the Broodlings. He's going to lose a second one. Balloon almost gets it. That's a, that's a really cool start for Balloon. i I got to ask, you know, do you think that was worth it? I, I, is it worth the cost? Now, on the one hand, the Terran can just expand in his main. So against a Protoss, for instance, I really like that. But there's a couple of lings out that kill off the worker building the Yeah, CC. I think there was one lava that got out yeah. of that hatchery before. And he's actually able to get in there. He gets a marine out of it as well. Balloon, you you mad individual. Manages he's to pull really off a very cats esque build here. And, well, well, there's speed nearing completion. This Reaper should be fine for the next 30 seconds. Hack! Oh, no! He what? Gets some, what? He gets what? the Reaper with slow lings. Is, what is going what's on? What's wrong with Hack? But I should point out, by the way, this is on the Korean server. He has no excuse. There's no lag here. This no. is ridiculous. No, that's a disaster. I mean, losing the Reaper? That doesn't sound like a lot, but you basically just see full map control, harass potential, and yet another set of guns. And there's no reason for that to happen. Now, of course, Hack's not out of the game. I mean, he's working on his expansion. His expansion's actually going to finish before... Wow. Balloons does, which is great, and he's got—he still has 20 workers, but he did lose a lot of mining time in the process. And wow, Hack is just—he's really scared. He yeah, thinks do you blame him? A Ling Bane bust behind this, and oh. honestly, I think that's a really good call. Oh my, Balloon just actually popped his balloon. He lost his Overlord on the neutral missile turret to the right oh. of the base there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that's well, that's unfortunate. unfortunate. 
Well, at least he knows they're there now. Now, I think he has practiced on this map. I mentioned before really that well, Smile so. was practicing with him for Legend. Yeah. And uh, as Hack is obviously a Terran player, the Balloon is going up against. I think they may have also practiced on Wrecking Ball some. Now, this is an interesting follow-up here for Hack. He's going up to three Raxes pretty quickly. So he's not going to be looking to take a third CC anytime soon. And I don't think this is going to be landed anytime soon. There's Speedlings out. There's a good number yeah. of them with 12 here. I don't think he can take this. Yep. And uh -oh. He's, oh, now the surround hack is getting hacked to pieces here. This is just disastrous for him. He loses all of his guns. There's nothing here to hold off these lings. I mean, obviously, they're not going to get in with the wallop behind it. And no, but it's ability, forcing but... more SCVs off the line, and, and it's, it's delaying the expansion. Yeah. This is like, Balloon is getting himself in a really comfortable spot here. He's been droning up behind this. He has a Roach Warren coming up behind this. He's not super high up in drones because he has been adding on that Roach Warren. He's been mining a lot of gas behind this. Looks like he wants to take a third base here. And uh, that's going to put him in a great position economically, of course. And from here, Hack is still one base. He's the biggest. Another really big thing to point out about this is that he's been forced to mule that main a lot, which means it's going to mine out a lot faster than it otherwise would. You want to be spending your mules on your natural expansion at this point in the game. I should point out as well the 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 third base in particular. A surround comes in again. He's got it. The base. The speedlings in the base. He gets a surround on the hellion. I'm not sure if he's got quite enough links to finish these off, and it looks like he won't. But Hack is just. I mean, he is under so much pressure here from Balloon, and Balloon is just slapping him about. I have to wonder if there's. It's the history between these two guys. If I recall correctly, was Balloon bearing in mind his clan tag is Nex? Was Balloon actually on Xenix? prior to going to Startail. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was picked up by Startail when he qualified for Code A late 2013 or mm. Season 2 2013. Well, whatever um, the case, I mean, they were teammates, but yeah. I just wondered if they went back even further than that because, of course, Hack was a member of Xenex back in the day. But I, they obviously know each other really well, but Balloon has got all the cards here. Hey, God, it's 12 Roaches versus 5 Hellions and a Marine. What, what are you going to do? There are two Marauders coming out, which is yep. going to help out. But that's not enough with the bunker not finished yet. If he can kill the SCB working on the bunker and delay that, maybe even cancel that, all of a sudden the Marauders become a lot less scary. Here come more of the Roaches moving on in. The Marauder is going to add a lot of firepower. One Hellion already going down. Good focus fire on the SCB building that bunker. Even going to be able to force the cancel on that. And uh, there's a lot of units here, but none of them really that well, except these two Marauders against those Roaches. Oh. Down. The Marauder gets trapped as well. Like, this is going horribly wrong in every way. But a good surround here from Hack. He's able to do some damage. He brings out another Marauder in the top there. And damage is still being done here by the one and only Balloon. But Hack is fighting. He will fight at that ramp. He will try his best to hold this off. Pulls SCVs yet again. Units keep flooding in, but it looks like Hack's going to hold on to this for now. Yeah, but this is far from an all-in from Balloon behind nope. us. He's up at oh, he's in the base again. Fire coming in. Oh, he gets my into the base God. again. And he's killing off even more stuff. He won't be able to kill off that low-health Marauder, but up to 12 workers killed. He'll get another one here with these couple yep. roaches. That puts Hack down at 31. More links coming in. I'm not sure if I like that decision entirely, but he is going to pick up a Marauder with this. Almost. Almost, yeah. Oh, Hack with a nice little, nice little micro there. I would have said that would have absolutely been worth it if he gets a Marauder, but with the Medivacs now out, there's no way that's going to work. And Balloon knows it. But that's fine. He doesn't care. As you said, it, he's forced this expansion to be severely delayed. The main is going to be mined out. It looks healthy now, but it mines out faster than you might think. And third bases on this map are very, very risky. All right, there's, a, there's a back base you can take, but it has less mineral patches and gas because it's safer. The map designer decided, you know what we're going to do? If you want to take a good base, you've got to take a risk to take it. So, mm -hmm. it can be pretty brutal. Drops going to come in. Drops can be good on this map, but they only have certain ways out of the base. So, you've got to be really, really careful here. And he decides, oh, wow, that's a lot of purple banelings. I don't want to be anywhere near that. I'm going to pull back. More lings now moving across the map here as well. Balloon is in a commanding spot. He's bringing mutalisks onto the field here too. And with this, there's not really much at home to defend against this ling run by. There's, there's a, a lot of lings too. So a lot of lings. But He's going for it. it. Oh, the Winter Mines. The Winter Mines do nothing. But the Lings don't either. So, ooh, that could have been brutal. I would have actually liked to see him go for the Mineral Line there instead of trying to go into the main. Yeah, but I considering what had been happening previously with that that front door always being open, it makes sense. And now comes the drop. Hacker's getting back into this fight. He takes a Queen. He's going to get that Mineral Line. We need to see a response here. Here come the Lings, but the mines could go off very well. Decent connection there. Not too bad. The second mine there, not really detonating on anything here. He does clean this up, does clean. Now, 
The Marines dropping on the backside of that mineral line. This is a very, very dangerous base to take as you enjoy it. It is. Before. Yep. Mutas trying to clean this up, but there's not really that many of them right now. There's not quite enough Mutas to make that happen. He is going to be able to drive that into a corner here, but you want the Muta count good enough so you can chase down a Medivac and kill it without taking too many losses. And he is going to take losses. He starts to he uses his precious Banelings there. He does shut that down, but damage was definitely done by Hack. Hack has actually killed nine workers, which is pretty good, but he's got to do a couple more of those, I feel, to really be in this game because there's still 69 drones up. There are still Lings, Mutas, and Banelings being built at a decent rate the bigger thing the biggest thing that's kind of a bit of an issue here for balloon is that he doesn't have a great mute account he's no. only at five at the moment he's got plus one attacks coming in which is nice but another thing to note is that his evolution chambers have only just now gone down his upgrades for the ground units are significantly delayed he does have baneling speed which is going to be really nice in trying to hold this push but I, I feel like he would really want at least three or five more mutalists to try to deal with this this is a really strong push that hack has coming out and with the position on this mineral line, it's going to be really hard for Balloon to defend this. Yeah, I mean, it's a nasty base to take, and we've seen a lot of players take huge amounts of damage trying to take this base. Uh, it seems optimal because it's so close by. The connections with the Banelings are pretty good, but there's not enough of them. No, and the mine's also connecting fairly well. A lot of drones already cleaned up this base. 25 workers killed here for Hack Balloon. Finally reacting and pulling these things back, but... Hack has done a great job getting his way back into this game. Oh, yeah. This is actually taking a work for lead, and this looks like Hack may actually be able to close it out here against Balloon. It looks like he very well might. This is looking good for him. It looks like we're going to see a cleanup here. More links come in, and the Mutas engaging as well, but several more Mutas will be killed. The Mines don't hurt, but here come the reinforcements. Hack is in full beast mode right now. This base has taken huge damage, as you noticed earlier, and really there's nothing left for Balloon to defend. He has now lost that base. Hack is looking pretty on two bases, and after a really good aggressive opening from Balloon, unfortunately, well, his army's looking a little bit deflated right now. Yeah, he's sitting at a 40 supply deficit here. He's got his 1-1 upgrades on the way, but with 1-1 nearing completion here for Hack, he's way behind on the upgrades. I guess he's ahead in tech, technically, as he does have the Spire up. He's got some Mutas, but he doesn't have many. He doesn't have enough to really be taking no. advantage of that Spire. Not and a good Muta map, Hacks either. A third. No, it's not a good Muta map with those neutral turrets up there. Yep, yeah, can be absolutely disastrous to try and take that. And we've got Hack. It was happy just to take the smaller base to the back. It's much more secure. It's easier to defend. It doesn't have quite as many minerals on it, but it's, it's pretty cool nonetheless. And Hack's army is now starting to look scary. 32 Marines. Hack has woken up after... I just feel he was asleep at the start of the game and let so many stupid things happen. But now he has a really good Biomine Force and he's splitting well against Speed Banes, which puts him in a great position. And Balloon is going to take the back base, but the third base is already established here for the Terran, and the macro is in full swing. 150 supply to 91. I think, I mean, this feels like just a matter of time. We'd need to see some really good detonations. We have got Burrow starting, which, as we have seen in the past, Burrowed Baneling landmines can turn things around. But Burrow might not even be done by the time Hack's push arrives. It's already on the way. Yeah, Burrow is still a good 80 seconds away from completion. 1-1 one, one is going to finish, which is going to be a nice little boon for him, but... Balloon's only got 20 or so Banelings here. He doesn't have the creep spread to really engage perfectly. He has opted to retake his third at the safer location, which means that it's going to be harder for Hack to actually pressure on in. But either way, there's just so much Terran here. There's so many mines, so many medevacs, so many marines. I am not entirely sure how Balloon is going to survive this. He's sitting at about a 65 supply deficit, too. Yeah, it's going to be extremely difficult to engage, no doubt. And Hack is looking to try and threaten this base, and he will be able to do so. The Burrow is not done yet. The Lings come in, and they're able to absorb most of the mine hits. The Banelings are coming in, though, and the, this is just a killing ground here for Hack by the looks of it. Banelings coming in two by two, which is nowhere near good enough. Hack splits are absolutely impeccable. And uh, Balloon is driven back once again, and that, that had to work, and it didn't. And this is going to be a real problem now to defend this third base. Yeah, still a couple of Banelings rolling in, trying to clean up what they can. Looks like they may actually be able to clean up this push, defying all odds, but still, as we say so often, at what cost? He's sitting at three Mutalists, no Banelings, and, well, he's getting Overlord drops, which is a common misclick for Zerg players. He'll have to cancel that for some Banelings here, but... Either way, Hack's just going to continue pumping unit after unit after unit across the map here, and Balloon, looking like he is out of chance to take this game. It's yep. Really difficult. Yep, it's just, uh, what can I say, Hack's poking him with a pin and eventually he is going to explode and there is not much left here for the Mayan Sanity player, I am afraid. 
the 2-2 is about to finish up here for the Terran player. Good Banelink connections happen. If Balloon can hold on, it will be incredible, but I just don't see a way of that happening. Now, Burrow's done, but there's no Banelings left, and that's the GG, and my insanity, unfortunately, will take their first loss in a hefty one at the hands of Startail. Yeah, and Startail really pulling out all of the stops there with a scary, scary lineup, it oh, must yeah. be said. They really went all out here. They deserve that win. 4-1, a very, very convincing win there. And that hands us our first loss. It does, it admittedly. It had yeah. to happen eventually. Yeah. Now, you weren't able to bring out Stardust, and you weren't able to bring out Jack G, who are obviously linchpins of the team there. I think that would have gone certainly very differently, a lot closer if you were able to use those players. I would have imagined Jack G would have beat Legend. There's no doubt about that, but... It's, you know, it happens. Uh, as, as you're well aware, sometimes you can't bring your full team roster to a team match, and unfortunately, Startail could. So, you know, it was a, it was a pretty good lineup from Startail. They weren't messing around. I mean, putting life out in a 1v1, that just says to me immediately, look, we're taking this seriously, and we're yeah. sick of losing. So, bring it. We want that money. And they walk away with the lion's share of it. So, as you said, your first loss here, that puts my insanity at 4-1 in the Clan Wars. Still one of the highest scoring teams in the league, if not the highest scoring. I'm pretty sure you are the highest scoring, actually. That's cool. Still. That's cool. All right, we'll have to make a 5-1 next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we'll have plenty more opportunities for my insanity to play in the Clan Wars going forward. But it's you know, it was cool to see Balloon play. He, he had a good lead, honestly. I, I do really feel... Like, he was doing well, but that third base location maybe got a little bit greedy. I would have liked to see him take the back base instead. It's like, do you really need that extra min mineral patch and gas? Is it worth the risk? Do you really feel you have that good map control? Because we see on that map so many people take it, and then they rapidly realize, actually, that back mineral line is one of the most exposed on any map that has ever existed. So you've got to be ready to defend that. And I'd love to see Zerg players actually put spines down there to defend that back middle line, but very, very few of them do. So I think there's still a lot of learning to be done on Wrecking Ball. Yeah, for sure. I think it's one of the maps that we've actually seen less in our Clan Wars. But, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely something that needs to be worked on there. And thanks again for having me on to cast. It's been ah, fun. pleasure. Thank you very much for co-casting there. Of course, Penguin from Team My Insanity and a caster in his own right. And it's a great pleasure to have a co-caster here, especially one that knows the players. That's always a treat. Although, it always sucks to cast your players losing, as I know all too well. Yeah, it's a sad time. Yeah, it sucks. I remember the first time I ever did it, it was goddamn heart-wrenching. But uh, you get used to it eventually. That's just uh, one of the perils of having a team and also being a caster that occasionally casts that team. But thank you very much, Penguin. And also big thanks, of course, to the players today. Congratulations to Startail. Take the convincing 4-1 win here in the Clan Wars. And of course, we have more coming up. We have a Titanic Clash coming up tomorrow. This is going to be awesome. We've got MVP taking on Axiom at 2 p.m. EDT, and the lineup has no mirrors at all, even on New Pompeii, because that's the ace. But there's no mirrors! None. None at all. Here's the lineup, folks. It looks brutal. Heart versus Sniper. Alicia versus Dream, Impact versus Super, Impact and Crank. The, I think that's the first ZVP team we have seen. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I can't remember a ZVP team in 2v2, but yeah, we've so got one. Terran tends to be the overwhelming choice in yeah. the current meta. Well, if Axiom have put a Zerg and a Protoss on there, then they have a reason for it. They've come up with some interesting builds on that map in the past, so I'm intrigued to see where that goes. And then we have Ryung versus Billowy. And Crank versus Keen. That's a lineup, man. That is a... I really hope that goes all the way to seven games. Because I, just for my own personal pleasure, want to see some amazing stuff coming out of those guys for that. Or at least six games, so we don't have to see new Pompeii ZVZ. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it will inevitably be Impact versus Dong I mean, it's just... It... <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, well, you know, the, the whole point of Clan Wars was to actually be an experiment. It was to say, hey... This is, we're going to put out some new maps. We're going to see what happens with those maps. And we will find some maps that work and some maps that don't. And I'm actually more surprised that we found, I think, six maps that do work and then one map that doesn't. It's a pretty good ratio. All right, folks. 
we actually just lost Penguin there for some reason. I'm not sure what happened, but he just dropped off Skype. Regardless, it's good time to wrap up. So thank you very much for watching. Do remember to follow the channel. If you do that, it will remind you when matches are going live. And also, if you have an MLG account, you can actually click a reminder button on the schedule, which will tell you when things are going on. We do have a MLG.TV app, which is available as well for mobile devices. De de well, devices, that's not even weird. Mobile devices. Sure, what accent that actually was. It might have been New York Jewish. A very bad New York Jewish. Regardless, it is available. You can pick it up. Just look for MLG TV on the Google Play Store and the Android Android App Store. Right, the iOS App Store. And we've also got other matches coming up. EG vs. Saxi. We're actually going to have to move that because that's actually my surgery date. So I will need to move that. I will keep you posted on that. And then, of course, uh, a big Memorial Day clash. I am versus MVP. Oh, it's a classic. That's going to be a great one. Then, of course, EG taking on Clan Who on May the 30th, and Root versus Startail to round things off on May the 31st. And then, of course, our June schedule will be available relatively shortly. My name's been Total Biscuit, and uh, this, of course, has been Shoutcraft Clan Wars. Congratulations to Startail for taking the win, and we'll see you next time.